This week, Alex makes an upgrade to the boathouse as he builds a new bench where he'll begin working on the spars and masts. But first, he and Steve will need to get the last of the bronze floors installed. Since I've had to judge one of these. Right. <laughs> How'd I do? Uh, you are about an inch from the bottom of the plank. So there is definitely, there's two screws below it, uh, into the frame. Okay. So you don't need that. Okay. And the plank above it has nothing in it. Okay. So I can do the two planks above it. I can do two bolts each plank. Yes. Okay. And is that all the bolts you need? It's all the bolts I need as long as that bottom one's attached well. So the third plank above it seems like it only has a rivet in it yes we're gonna have to go back and add some rivets okay cool. after the floors are in okay
think one bolt through the forefoot and through the keel and three hanger bolts would be enough to hold it. Oh, God no, this boat's gonna fall apart. <laughs> Bronze floors are done. So now Steve went back to work on the big main mast step and Alex set up the spar bench and got ready to take a closer look at Victoria's main mast. A couple of videos ago, Alex mentioned that he and Kira and Steve and Robin were planning a long weekend skiing in the backcountry. And here's some of the footage that they brought back. If you want to get right to the boat building, just skip ahead two minutes. Well, here we are, planning on skiing in, but the snow is a little crusty, so pulled out the snowshoes for the first day. Good to be out here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I 
didn't need it. <laughs> We're back from our long weekend. Uh, Steve and Robin and Kira and I went out into the back country. Uh, we pulled some sleds eight miles into a campsite, set up camp with a couple of tents, uh, and hung out there. And then we uh, put some skins on our skis and basically explored for a couple of days before skiing the eight miles back out to the cars and back to here was a great time. It was awesome to be able to disconnect for a little bit and to hang out together. And uh, I got to know Robin a little bit better. Steve got to know Kira and they got to know each other. So it was really, really good. We really enjoyed it. Uh, but now it's back to the project. And so while Steve is working on the forefoot for the main mast, I am going to start working on the main mast. So this is the mast from Victoria that we uh, dismantled. And we're gonna see in what kind of shape it is and see if we can reuse this for our mizzen mast. Uh, Victoria was a cutter, so she had one main mast, didn't have a mizzen. Um, and so her main mast is likely bigger than our mizzen mast. Um, and I say likely because it really depends on how the wood is um, and if we can salvage it. So there might be some rot spots and stuff. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to basically catalog what we've got here, figure out the diameter that she is, um, see uh, what looks like it's in good, in good shape or not. And then I'm gonna mark where they had all of their fittings and what kind of fittings they had and see if we can reuse those. Uh, once I do mark those, I will start taking those off and then I'm gonna strip this mast completely and see what kind of shape it's really in. And then we're gonna see if we can reuse it. After that, I've got all of her little spars. We're gonna see if we can reuse some of these as well. Um, and if not, I'm gonna to have to make new ones. And then I'm going to have to start figuring out how to make our main mast. So if you remember, we took down a big uh, Norway spruce in the driveway a couple of years ago. If you haven't seen that video, you should go back and watch it. It was pretty wild. We got that all milled up and I am going to laminate up a bird's mouth spar for our main mast at some point. Definitely once the weather warms up a bit. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a lot of research on that kind of stuff, which is gonna be really exciting and uh, really looking forward to getting to that. But right now, I'm gonna catalog all of this and strip her down and see how she's doing. There's a lot of dolphin that under this thing. Funny to pull it out. There was actually a drill bit in this one. Oh, really? Yeah. Someone broke the drill bit off? Either broke the drill bit off or was trying to drill the screw out. So I got all the fittings off of the mast and now it's time to strip it. So I'm trying to find the best way to do this. Um, Steve and I have kind of been talking about it. I was wondering if a card scraper might work. Uh, he was thinking also a sander. Don't love the idea of sanding all this stuff. Um, so I'm gonna see how a card scraper works for now. I've got an old one that I just pulled out. Um, I haven't used these very much, so I'm not the best at burnishing these, but I've got a little bit of an edge on here. See how that does. Um, and I kind of want to take some small passes off of this and see what it looks like. This bottom just looks pretty rotten already, so I'm not too worried about this stuff. So this is probably going to get cut off anyways. Um, but I'm going to go down and try to get the varnish and stuff off of this and see if we can see what the wood looks like. 
Alright, so the card scraper worked really well on the lighter stuff over here, but now that I'm getting to paint and some thicker varnish, it's uh, not working all that well. So I'm going to pull out the uh, Vestal sander in the vacuum and give this a quick rub with some 80 grit, try to get most of it off, and then I'll uh, come back at it with the scraper and see if we can clean that up like we did over here. Meanwhile, over in the boat, there was still a bit more fitting to be done to make the mast step fit over the four bronze floors. Last week, Steve cut the two center notches, and now he worked on the other two at each end. just about wrapped up the mast step for the main mast here. And if we look at the main mast, we can see that it is seven inches in diameter, and the mizzen is six, and the main mast is obviously a good bit taller than the mizzen mast. So it's a much bigger stick than the mizzen, and the main mast also has a bigger sail on it and bigger head sails. So when we did the, the mast step for this mast, we wanted to make sure that we were spreading that load over a good part of the hull because you can see between the weight of that mast and the shrouds pulling down and this big mainsail and these two head sails, there's a lot of forces going on. And if you look at the mizzen mast, you can see it doesn't have the head sails. The sail itself is a lot smaller, as is the spar. So we can make a much smaller mizzen step and be okay. There's just a lot fewer forces back there. And if we hop over to this drawing, we can see that Atkin has the main mast coming down and stepped right onto the keel and we elected to put it on top of four bronze floors here. And as that mass comes down, it's raked, so it is, I believe, four inches and 10 feet. So for every 10 feet the mass goes up, it goes back four. And we wanna make sure that this mass step that we put in is 90 degrees to the mast, so that when the mass comes down, there'll be a tendon on the bottom that'll register inside that mass step. And we wanna make sure that those don't meet at some funny angle. So here's our mass step for the main. Uh, this is the forward end, this is the aft end. And the mass is gonna end up landing somewhere right in here, give or take. And what we're saying about the rake is we wanna make sure that when the mass comes down, remember this is sitting on the floors, which are a little bit of an angle. The mass is going to come down also at a little bit of an angle. And we want to make sure that that tenon that we cut in the bottom of the mast is going to register into the mortise that we cut into here. And if that all does it at 90 degrees, it'll be really easy for putting the mast in and out and getting all of this lined up. So what I did is I left us plenty of room for and after where the mast is going to land and left us plenty of meat here to play with. So when this is in the boat, we got to carve in, even if we have to drop two inches back here to be able to get that angle, we have the meat to play with, and then we'll just shape the mass step down and we'll leave this kind of 
larger round part raised a little bit and at the correct angle for the mass to come down and meet into this. And that'll give us enough room to work with and we don't have to worry about figuring out exactly where the mass is gonna go through and exactly how this is all gonna fit at this particular moment. We know it fits down really well on the floors. We have a little bit of room to work to shape it to fit. We can throw it in there and we can trod all over it. And if we ding and dent the top up in the next bit, that's not too big of a deal. And when we get much closer to putting that mast in and figuring out exactly where the hole's gonna get cut and where that's gonna end up landing with the rake, we'll uh, do the final bit of carving on this. And we'll do the same thing on the mizzen mast, although those floors are a lot flatter, so it's not gonna be quite as pronounced back there. Next week, Steve will get started on the mizzen mast step, and soon work also starts on the bulkheads, so stay tuned. Thanks, as always, for subscribing, liking, and supporting the project, and don't forget to sign up for our new newsletter, info in the description below. So have a great week, and see you next Friday.